Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing our resource gatherer AI. We're going to set up some simple resource regeneration. Let's begin. So here's our scene. I have two gatherers in here. I can select them and tell them to mine. So I can tell this one to mine this gold node, and I can tell this one to chop this tree. So right now they grab the resource until the node is depleted, then they'll look for another nearby node. In the previous video, we added multiple resource types, but when looking for another resource node, the gatherers are currently ignoring the type. So if a gatherer is mining gold and the node gets depleted, and the next nearby one is a tree, he won't switch to that. That is probably not the behavior that we want to create, so let's look at that. So here in the editor, I'm going to drag this one in there, and I'm going to place a tree next to it. Okay, so now I select this one, tell him to gather wood from this tree. He goes there, he chops down the tree, one, two, three. The tree is now empty, he drops it in storage, and now he decided to go and mine some gold. So right now they are gathering resources regardless of what the type you told them to mine. Maybe that's desirable behavior in your game, but in this case we want them to stick to the same resource type. So that's actually quite simple to change. Let's go into our game handler in our code in here. Now down here we have a function to get the nearby resource node. This one in here, get resource node near the position. It checks if the node is nearby this position within max distance, okay. And now in here we get a position and then we're going to get a game resource or resource type for our resource type. This is the one that we want to search. So in here we are duplicating our original list which contains all of the resource nodes and we are removing the ones that do not have resources or are too far. So in here let's just simply add another condition and test if the temp resource node list i if this resource node dot get resource type if it is different from the resource type that we want. If it is different then we're simply going to ignore it. So in here or too far or different resource type. So in here we're ignoring it if it no longer has resources, if it's too far, or if it's not of the type that we want. So let's update the static function as well. And let's find the references for this function and it's right here on the gather AI. So we want to keep gathering the same resource type so let's send the resource type that we're currently gathering. So get resource type. Yep, like that. Okay, so let's test. Okay, so I'm going to tell him to gather wood from this tree. He goes there, starts chopping down the tree. One, two, three. The tree is depleted and yep, now he stopped since there are no more trees nearby that one. Let's test to make sure that the gold, he still searches for the second one. So tell him to go there. He goes one, two, three. All right, goes to storage. Now he should go for that one. Yep, exactly. He's going for that one. He's mining it. One, two, three. Now goes to storage and yep, he stopped. Okay, great. So the gatherer is now correctly looking for nearby resource nodes, but only if they match the type that he was ordered to. All right, so that was a quick fix just to make sure that our AI is working exactly as we want it to. So now let's handle the resource regeneration. So when a node is depleted, we want it to regenerate after some time. There are several ways we can do the regeneration. We could set it to regenerate one unit per short amount of time, or start a timer and when the timer is depleted, we fully regenerate that node. Let's go with the latter behavior. So here on the resource node script, first we need to store the resource amount max. So we know the total to revert back to. So resource amount max and here we set the max to three, which is what we're setting previously and set it to be full, okay? Now let's go down here and make a function. We're going to make a private void reset resource amount. And here we're simply going to set the resource amount to be resource amount max. So up here, when we're grabbing resources from this node, when it is depleted, so it is under zero, so in here, node is depleted. So we are updating that sprite, and after that, let's add a timer to reset the resource amount. So for that, I'm going to use the function timer, which is part of the CodeMonkey utilities, which as always you can grab for free from untcodemonkey.com and create a new function timer, which will trigger the reset resource amount function, and let's say after five seconds. So this class creates an object which calls an action and triggers a function after a certain amount of time. So after five seconds, this function will be called. And on the reset function, let's also reset the sprite. 
So let's make a function dedicated to that. So a private void update sprite. And in here, we're going to test our resource amount. So if resource amount, if it is bigger than zero, then we have resources. If not, then the node is depleted. Node is depleted or up here, node has resources. So let's update it accordingly. So in here, this is what we're going to do. And up here, we're going to call update the sprite. And when we reset the resource amount, let's also update the sprite. And in here, let's use a different sprite in case we do have resources. So use the gold node sprite and the tree node sprite. Okay, so everything is looking good in here. Now let's go and test it out. Okay, so let's grab him, tell him to gather that wood and this one go gather some gold. All right, let's see. So that one has been depleted and now that one has been depleted as well. So let's wait five seconds. Yep, that one was regenerated and that one as well. Now that one is depleted, the other one is depleted and so on. As you can see, that one is back to normal. Okay, great. So we now have our nodes being fully regenerated after five seconds. And as you can see in this gathering here, he's consistently mining and mining again. I can select him and I'll tell him to go mine that one, which was previously depleted. And again, he's mining, depletes and goes. Works perfectly. Okay, great. So we have node regeneration working perfectly fine on both types. Now, just for fun, let's try the other method of creating a constant regeneration. So in here, let's make another function and let's call it private void regenerate single resource amount. And in here, essentially, we're going to regenerate, but only by one amount. So do a resource amount plus plus. And after we do, obviously, update the sprite. But we have to make sure we don't go over the maximum. So if it is less than the resource amount max, then we're going to do this. If not, we're not going to do anything. OK, that's a very simple function. Now, all we need to do is call this function every certain amount of time. So on the constructor up here, again, we're going to use a helper class from the CodeMonkey utilities. We're going to create a function periodic, which will trigger the function down here, the regenerate single resource amount. And we're going to trigger it every, let's say, two seconds. Now let's comment out the previous regeneration logic. OK. And just for testing, let's create a text updater. So up here, let's go into the CM debug class and create a text updater. The text updater will constantly print out the resource amount on vector 3.0 and on this transform parent. OK, great. So we should be able to see a text object displaying the current resource amount. So let's see if that goes down and up accordingly. OK, so we can now view how many resources each node has. So let's select this one, tell him to go there. And he goes and poof, he grabs one. That one goes down, that one goes down. And now, as you can see, it's going back up. Yep, exactly. And it doesn't go past the three. So it goes down, regenerates, goes back up. So let's do the same thing in here. Goes down and back up. OK, so just for fun, I've increased their speed and their animation speed so we can see them very quickly. Yep, there you go. Very quickly they go and they cut down the tree and the mine and so on and so forth. And as you can see, it goes down and it goes up every two seconds. And they're mining and regenerate. OK, great. Now, as you can see, we got a minor issue in here. Sometimes if they mine, as you can see, it goes under negative. That's because right now they are mining three resources, regardless of whether or not the resource node has three. So let's just very quickly fix that. So on the gather AI down here. So in here we are going to storage if the inventory is full. So let's simply add you go to storage if the inventory is full or the resource node dot has resources or it no longer has resources. So let's see that. Send them both to the same area. They're mining. And yep, that one mined just two and went back. That one mined two and went back. And yep, they are no longer going into negative numbers. So there you have it. We added some very simple resource regeneration using two different methods and made that our gatherers only look for resources of the same type. In the next video, we're going to take everything we've made so far and put it all together in a simple building construction. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.